Hello to everybody. Welcome to another edition of Libertas. Uh, tonight's edition, we will be discussing the State of the Nation Address, uh, which happened last Monday. And here to help me analyze, uh, talk about it, is uh, Undersecretary of the Department of Agriculture and the host at Libertas, none other than Pompey Lavinia. It's nice to have you back, Pompey, after a long, a long period. Good to be back, Tonino. Good to see you again. <laughs> Good to see you on yes. the show again. Yes. And the last time you were here, um, you were uh, a director of the social SSS. Commissioner. A commissioner. SSS. Commissioner. Sorry, commissioner of the SSS. And then you transferred. You were transferred to the uh, Department of Tourism. As In between, I was a USEC at. How the long department. was that? <laughs> Maybe a little over a month. <laughs> and then now I'm at the DA. But hopefully, this will be your permanent home for you know. Uh, I'm I'm used to change, to Nina. I mean, after all, we campaigned on a on a platform of change, right. and I'm pretty adaptable. I think I I sabi nila yung mga job applicants na fast learner, so it, it, there's a similarity naman in all of this. Um, but I like I like the DA because you're, every day you have a chance to help people directly. That's that's directly. great. We'll talk about that later. Uh, I think um, the first time you you were a guest here, our guest. You, we just Duterte just came off a sensational victory, in that, and you were the social media campaign director of, yes, yes. of the Duterte campaign. That was kakaupu pa lang ng pangulo noon, and in fact, uh, hindi pa nga siya nagsusona ng first sona niya. Ito nakapa second sona na niya ngayon, and uh, second, third, 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 third sona. sona. Yes, with a new director this time. With yeah, yes. with a new, and then um, we're. Flashing the telephone number on the screen. Kung may mga comments kayo or questions about the sauna, we'll be glad to uh, to read them as long as there's time. So, pag-usapan natin ngayon yung yung sauna. Um, and one of the first things that come to mind is the uh, the delay that happened in the sauna and the change in the leadership of of the mm -hmm. Congress. Uh, maybe you can give us some inside story. Ano ba nangyari dun? All of a sudden, uh, nagpalit yung Speaker of the House. Yes. Um, actually, I wasn't planning to go to the Sona, but somehow I, I had a, a gut feeling that something historic would happen there. <laughs> so the last minute, I got tickets and I was there. And true enough, something there happened. No. Um, but I was not surprised at all, Tonino, because um, to me, I was hearing statements about from the, the former Speaker that I thought was in conflict with what the president wanted. And that one of them is, for example, Noel. Mm -hmm. I know that the president is very much committed to the Constitution. And the Constitution mandates that there's an election in mm -hmm. 2019. So unless we're able to pass the, the new charter before then, he's not the type of guy who would, who would um, cancel elections because he's very confident. He can win any elections. He, I mean, yeah. He's willing to even go through elections himself again because he knows he will win with 88% approval rating. So that's the first cue that I, I got that um, there might be some change if he if uh, the, the former speaker insisted on that path. Was the president happy with the performance of the speaker in pushing the president's, uh, or the former speaker, which is speaker former speaker Alvarez, in pushing his legislative agenda? Was he happy? Well, I, I did not get to ask him directly, but if you... S if you look at it, I think he passed a lot of the, the initiatives of the president. He was able to put the Congress, um, lead the Congress in passing these bills. But I think there were just a few personal conflicts he had there which uh, caused the downfall. I think he made too many enemies rather than the president himself. Did he blackmail the president in any way? Because um, I, I read some commentaries uh, the former Speaker Alvarez, may mga binibitin na mga batas, and you already mentioned that he was making statements that that was in direct conflict with the president. I don't know if it's really about blackmailing, but I really think if I were to be asked, my guess really it was about the Noel. And that's really what it was about, um, because at the end of the day, if they insist on Noel the people will not accept it, Tonino. Mm -hmm. And if the people don't accept it, then there goes your constitutional change, which is something that's very important to the president because of the federalism. 
right? It, it would leave a bad taste in the mouth because you are extending your, because the speaker was being challenged in his own district. Um, and to sacrifice the whole agenda based on that, uh, I think that that was probably a mistake in the eyes of the president. I'm, I'm speculating. Yeah. So why Gloria Macapagal Arroyo? <laughs> Well, you'd have to ask the congressmen that, but a lot of them really look up to her mm -hmm. as a leader. Um, several of the congressmen are um, her former cabinet secretaries, people who work under her. And if we're going to go for federalism, if we're going to pass some very controversial or laws that will be contested, perhaps she's a, bit, a good choice because she knows how to lead. Okay, maybe related to that is what happens to the party now? I mean, uh, this, this guy is uh, very high up in the president's party and then the former Senate president, Coco Pimentel, also very high up and both of them were removed. Yes, they would probably have to reassess the party leadership because they had also been getting a lot of flack from the old guard of the party that they were recruiting left and right without really any regard to the positions of the people they were recruiting. So, I think there will be some realignments there. Ano ba ang, ano, ano ba ang weight ni Inday Sara, the daughter, Mayor Sara Duterte, in this, um, in this issue with the selection of the speaker? Is it really true that uh, she had a, a big hand in replacing Alvarez and selecting former President GMA? That's what the reports say, that she, she called up some people. I, I don't have first-hand information about it. I would not be surprised because of her diff with um, the former speaker. But that a lot of uh, the congressmen have testified to that effect. I don't think it would be the motive of the president. The president, I think, would really have his eyes on his agenda, which is federalism. I think that's what he was really looking at. There. It doesn't matter to him who's the speaker so long as that agenda will be uh, pushed through. Siguro at a certain point, maybe in his mind, he thought that mahirap if, if we go along the path of Noel, right? Because that would really, in my own mind and probably the president's mind, that would derail federalism. Okay, let's, let's read the first text. There. Congrats kay PRRD for sticking to the SONA speech. No curse, no foul language. Uh, drug lords should fear now. Well, walang change sa message ng Pangulo to Nino. Eh. It's been consistent message that what he's trying to do is to build a more comfortable life for everyone, right? The technical, the economic managers are saying a strong middle class, even an upper middle class. That has never changed. The drug war, the war against corruption, the war against um, drugs, criminality, that's all in service of the, of the vision of having a, a more comfortable life for all. Na, tayo, we grew up in pretty comfortable uh, lifestyle, no? and we take it for granted. But when you say comfortable life for most Filipinos to me, no, that's basically, you, you're talking about yung mga inaapi, yung mahihirap, di ba? And to them, that comfort which we take for granted is really, really a big thing. And that's the reason why they're supporting the president. All of this is in support of that. Okay. All everything is doing. Just just to summarize what was mentioned in the Sona, he mentioned the, about the drug war, his anti-corruption campaign, peace process, the issue with China, yes. protecting our uh, rights there. Yeah. Um, he also mentioned something about labor and employment, ending endo, seeking the help of the congressmen, uh, the environment. He was uh, he gave a strong statement for the environment prove, you know, that issue with Boracay, economy, uh, the train law. Mm -hmm. um, then he mentioned something about charter change, which we discussed, and security. Now, being the Department of Agriculture Undersecretary, did you feel that there was something missing uh, in the chart, in the SONA, re related to helping farmers? Uh, th this is related yeah, he, to he this. Actually, they said may something ano, about it, diba? nag, uh, nag, may kasi may text dito, uh, a farmer from, uh, a flower grower from Benguet. Good evening, I watched the sauna. Wala namang nabanggit about agriculture. Kamama, kawawa naman kami mga flower grower ng Benguet at ibang mga um, farmer. No, I think he mentioned about the rice holders, di ba? Mm -hmm. He cracking down on those that are artificially 
keep by the by the produce of the farmers very low and then create an artificial shortage later mm -hmm. he, he did mention about that and i think he even mentioned it um in relation to a cartel i think he used the word cartel there so uh, and i think he even if i remember correctly there was a proposal for a tariff on 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 those imports to be used para doon sa mga farmers natin and fisher folk natin. Maybe, but maybe definitely to know, we have the fifth, as far as I know, we have the fifth biggest budget. Mm -hmm. and the real strategy of a government is not what they say in a zona. Mm -hmm. It's where the money is. And the money is really in agriculture. There's a lot of money there. About the, we're, I think fourth or fifth largest budget kami. So we just have to spend it wisely. M maybe you can share that with us a little bit later where the, uh, the budget is going and how it's going to help well, you, the president mentioned something about uh, rice farmers, but of course, I think also about coconut farmers. He mentioned mm -hmm. something about that. But the, uh, you know, farming is not just the farmers are not only involved in rice and coconut, but other mm -hmm. other areas. So, but b before we go for the break, I'd like to uh, share with you the video we have of Camp Kanawan, which we're promoting. So mm -hmm. please show the video. I think you've been my, there. My favorite place. Yeah. Back to Libertas, this is Tonino Habana with uh, our special guest, Undersecretary Pompey Lavinia. Uh, we're discussing the State of the Nation Address 2018. And before the break, um, there was a question about the direction and government for the agriculture sector. And Pompey will share with us. Um, he mentioned that uh, agriculture has uh, the fifth largest budget. And kung hindi man nabanggit na pangulo sa sona, it's, men, it's, it's the spending that counts. And maybe you can share with us where the yeah. spending will go. Well, ang, alam mo naman, Tonino, 70% of the poor in our country is fishermen and fisher folk. No? Mm -hmm. And if you solve the agricultural problem in the Philippines, you've solved our poverty problem. Basically, you can bring it down to two things, which is productivity mm -hmm. and the way the profits are shared in the value chain. Productivity, what do I mean by that? how much, traditionally sinasabi niyan, how much you can produce in a hectare. But I'd like to think of it of how much money can you earn in a hectare, di ba? So we are very, very low compared to our, our neighbors. And what are the reasons? Walang irrigation, walang mechanization, uh, wala tayong inputs. So all the money is going there. That's why you can see, si, ito naman, project ni Secretary Pinyol, uh, under Secretary, you just follow, no? But he's pushing for solar irrigation. It's easy to do. Walang social impact na yung mga dams. He's doing, we're doing a lot of mechanizations. We're giving out, you know, and also a lot of it, by the way, we're doing now by loans, soft loans, 2% ang, ang interest rate. And then, of course, the inputs. Trying to move them more to high-value crops. Diba? That, that would also give them more income per hectare. The other side of the of the equation is how it's divided, the profits. Because it can be very productive, mm -hmm. pero yung farmer natin or fisher folk, maliit yung share, eh ganun pa rin. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? We, we have, we try to uh, improve the value chain so they can sell directly to the public. Like we have these gendas uh, where we bring them to the market directly. 
we also teach them how to process, how to package, so that maka, ano sila, maka upstream. Those are the things that we do, and that's where the money is. But we also have to have the money, alam mo naman, because of our weather, we also have to be ready to intervene anytime if there's a disaster. So it's a combination, to Nino, between responding to the present needs and doing strategic something strategic for the long term. So ngayon, di ba, maraming nasiraan, over a billion na yata yung alam kong damage. So we have these grants, di ba? We have these grants and, and we have these loans that are no interest. So these are some of the things where the money is going to. Okay. Um, basically, in terms of agriculture, what, what's the biggest um, item that, that the government spends on in terms of infrastructure spending? Is it irrigation or, uh, alam ko or farm to market roads? Farm to market is really one of the biggest mm -hmm. ones, no? Um, because that is really one thing that would really impact um, impact the productivity of the farmers. Solar, I know, and the mecha mechanization, those are the big amounts that, um, that are being spent. Uh, are, we, are we also giving them assistance in terms of fertilizer, giving them fertilizer, abo uh, seeds, we're avoiding research? The, we're avoiding the giving up the inputs because, alam mo, it's been subject to so many problems scandals, in the past, yeah. scandals, na nakakatakot kahit wala ka pang ginawa. There's always somebody down the line who might do it. So that's why we're moving more towards, uh, rather than giving inputs, we give loans, but very, very low interest loans. Uh, that's what, the, and it's more sustainable. It's more sustainable. Kasi, di ba, if a whole co-op will buy a tractor and a 2% interest, that's really, really very affordable. And they can choose their own machine. Di ba? Kasi doon nagkaka-ano eh, doon nagkaka-scandal eh when, when the department starts choosing which brand, and then don't sa specs, may na manipulate minsan yung specs. So what we're saying is, sige, kayo pumili ng brand nyo. Uh, we will give you the financing to do it. And it's also sustainable. Would you believe Benguet Farmers, 100% repayment rate? So I really hats off to them. No? The others are 96%, 95%. But Benguet Farmers, 100%. Um, one of the things that was mentioned is yung land use. And I think land use has a very big impact on agriculture. Why? Because a lot of our agricultural lands are being converted into um, development. And uh, can, you, can you give us your inputs on how they're going to do this uh, land use and how they're going to study what, what can be converted into subdivisions and townships and what can be converted and what has to retain as uh, agricultural land. Hindi ako privy dyan sa ano talaga yung policy nila dyan. Mm -hmm. I think there's a... There's but a you're in favor of that? Oh, it's some kind of rationalization, right. yes. And what I do know is that under the draft charter, that's going to be devolved down to the states na sila ang mag ng land use policy nila. So definitely, we have to have some kind of order in what we do. But the other side of things is Cagayan de Oro, for example, where I'm from. There's still a lot of agricultural land right. going on. Right. Uh, available, but there's no farm to market roads, there's no assistance, diba? So it's really, well, land is one issue because the flat lands are being taken, but the other issue is it needs to be productive because we have much smaller countries in the world that are much more productive in, in terms of agriculture. So the key is really uh, providing the infrastructure that will make our agriculture productive. And uh, the president did mention that um, there has been a, a disparity in the amount of funds being given to Mindanao. Yes. He mentioned that. Yes. So he said he's going to catch up in the, in, with, with that disparity. And that's ironic given that this is a president who is from Mindanao. Okay, so you, the Department of Secretar Agriculture Secretary is from Mindanao, you're from Mindanao. Yeah. Do you see that in your budget? Well, sa, sa DA, I think I could see that the Secretary is really giving importance to Mindanao. Mm -hmm. Nakikita ko yun. I haven't, you know, I'm new there to Nino, and the budget that's there is already a given budget. Uh, in fact, the 2019 budget was already submitted without any of my participation. So. I'm really looking more about the 2020 budget. I'm looking at that and I'm looking at rather than, because the budget is a question also of the Congress. Right. No? Uh, 
under my, my the sector that I'm in charge with, I'm more concerned about utilizing the budget. Whatever money is there, we should spend it all. So because any peso there you did not spend, it's a peso you could have used to help somebody. So sabi ko, kahit hindi perfect, basta wala lang corruption, kailangan talaga gastusin yan para to help as many people. Because DBM is going to go into cash budgeting. If you don't spend the money in 2019, you have no business asking for m more money in 2020. All right. So that is more my concern. But anecdotally, I do see the Secretary um, focusing a lot, releasing a lot of money for Mindanao. I don't know lang the percentages exactly. You're, you're new to the Department of Agriculture. You came from a, um, a private sector, mm -hmm. entrepreneur, you're also a professor. Going into the DA, um, what are your observations going into that sector of government? H how do you feel about the people working there? Yeah. Are they qualified? Are they, do they need yes. more education? Random, random observations. Uh, in a lot of the, and this is goes across even the not so much DOT because it was so small, uh, SSS, no, for example. There's a, there's a lot of and DA, DA is in particular. There's mm -hmm. a lot of very very qualified people. Uh, let me talk about the international division for one thing. You have young students there, young ma people with masters from UPLP, UPLB. The very bright. Um, very committed. They really understand the markets. They understand the, the the negotiations that's going on. But you would also see some that are really not qualified. Uh, so it, you you see the whole the whole range of people there. Um, the other thing is there's we have so many rules that it's so difficult to do good. Uh, so difficult to even get one thing done. You have so many signatures. And I understand the rationale behind that to avoid fraud, to avoid corruption, but perhaps we've gone a little bit too much on the other side. And again, an observation of all, a third observation is, parang wala talaga tayong, like what they have in the other countries where they would really have a strategic plan for 10 years, 20 years. We tend to be more administration oriented. Kung ano yung administration, ano yung priorities, Rather than really saying, well, as a country, are we going to be rice self-sufficient or are we just going to have security? And what is security? Is it 70%, 80%? So we're always dependent on the individual judgments of the people that go there. No? And then the fourth thing that I'm seeing there is, you know, this is a plug for federalism. Our country is so diverse, so big, so many different situations. It's just very, very difficult to manage from a central office. To Nino, if, if I were, theoretically, I'm not saying I will be, if I were Secretary of Agriculture, I'd still have a headache of solving all the agricultural pro agriculture problem of the Philippines. I think I would come and go and it would still not be solved. But if you divide it down to regions, it's really doable. You can say that Let's say Northern Mindanao, for example. How would you make that at par with global agricultural practices? You can do it. But if you're talking about doing it for the whole country, then, well, good luck. You know, it would really take somebody who's very, very strong-willed, perhaps also very, very lucky, mm -hmm. who would have a cooperative Congress and a president who's supportive. So, so many, many different factors for such a big mission. So, um... You feel that um, breaking up the country into federal states will also solve a lot of the problems that you have right now that you, you experience or you're observing in the DA? Yeah, the problems would be solvable. The problems would be solvable. Rather than one region, right, to solve it, how do you make it the most productive and the most socially just? You can solve it for one region. Mm -hmm. 12 people or 18 people can solve 18 puzzles, but for somebody to solve all, it's very, very difficult. The same with tourism. How, how, is, how is the DA broken down right now? Um, I'm sure you're also broken down into regions. Yes, we're broken down by regions. Theoretically, mm -hmm. it's supposed to have been devolved down to regions, yes. but in reality, it's really still centrally controlled. The policies are still centrally controlled, uh, but the 
reality on the ground is they're so diverse, so different. Benguet is so different from Cagayan de Oro or Northern Mindanao. Well, well no, when, when someone comes in uh, as a Department of Secretary of uh, Agriculture, um, I, th you mentioned ripe self-sufficiency, right? mm. during, during the previous administration, that was their goal, ripe, ripe self-sufficiency. Aquino. Which, yes. Which they never achieved. Correct. And that uh, was the stated goal of Secretary Pinol when he started. He also stated that. Yes. So what is the practical goal right now for... Well, the, the, I think the president has made a statement that we can never be sufficiently, I mean, totally rice self-sufficient. So I guess we're moving now towards more of rice, rice security. Rice security. Making sure we don't run, run out, out of, of rice. Because remember, the balancing act there between rice being rice self-sufficient is the prices. Mm -hmm. Because you have foreign markets that where the rice is produced much cheaper and it's available, that will find its way here. That's why they smuggle the rice. So where is the balance? Because we also don't want to be importing, let's say, the extreme situation where you import everything and there's a war there and suddenly you don't have any rice. So that has to be a policy that has to be decided way above my level. We'll be going for the break. This is becoming more and more interesting. But before the going for, to the, for the break, I'd like to ask you this question you can answer after the break. Do you think that the policymakers at the DA have enough research now to advise uh, the president and the, the secretary of what direction it should take? Don't go away. This is Tonino Bana Libertad. Welcome back to Libertas. This is Tonino Abana with our special guest, Undersecretary Pompey Lavinia of the Department of Agriculture. Before the break, I asked Pompey here um, if, if he feels that the, that the leadership President Duterte, Secretary Pinol, have the right uh, people backing them up with the research and the advice in the Department of Agriculture to create these policies. Okay. Let's separate President Duterte from Secretary Pinol okay. and the undersecretaries. Under no? um, because I see Secretary Pinol is the one giving the advice to President Correct. Duterte, right? And But doon sa department, what I can tell you is that the research is there and the options are there. But it's up to the political appointees to make the decisions. But everything you need to know to make those wise strategic decisions are already there. The job because of the bureaucracy is not to make decisions. Their job is to give you options. These are the options. Mm -hmm. For example, it's a rice sufficiency. We can be rice sufficient, but this will be the consequences. Mm -hmm. We can be totally not care and import everything, everything so we can focus instead on high value crops, but this will be the consequences. Mm -hmm. This will be the risk. So it is that this, your leadership has to have a vision, right? Because it's the vision and the objective that will drive which strategy you're going to pick. Okay. And of course, that's supposed to be driven also by the president's vision. So yun ang situation don. But definitely all the options are there. You have experts there. You have, for example, Yusek Fred Serrano has been there all this while. He's, he has all the institutional memory of, of Agri. And all that information is available. So I have a texter here from uh, Maguindanao Province, Northern Kabuntalan. Sana maayos nila ang mga main canal ng irrigation namin dito. So this is a wish list from them. Uh, I have several text messages here from public school teachers. Mm. And ang tinatanong nila is, bakit walang increase or hindi nabanggit yung increase ng sweldo ng teachers? Military na banggit, police na banggit, sila lagi hindi nababanggit. Yes. We'd have to address that question to the DBM and why, why, why that is so. I mean, at the end of the day, nakita naman natin na, well, I haven't seen the details of the budget also to Nino, so I don't know if wala bang increase doon. Diba? Because... The number one in the budget are the social services, and that includes education. Educa uh, 
DepEd, I think, DSWD. Uh, those are the, the areas that got the biggest budget, even more than DA. Okay. Uh, sa anti-corruption naman, uh, very strong a statement ng Pangulo doon na tutuloy niya yung anti-corruption campaign ng yeah. And in fact, he took out several of his uh, close friends, including uh, Secretary Teo and mm. of, of the Department mm -hmm. of Tourism. Ngayon, ang tanong ba, ang tanong is, nakasuhan ba sila? Secondly, alam natin yung issue, and you, you were also sort, your mm. mention, name was also mentioned there because mm. Sila, si Teo is actually a tool for, mm -hmm. uh, they got uh, some budget for promoting the DOT, which was really uh, not, according to the ombudsman, is not really the proper way. Binalik na ba yung pera? Uh, ang alam ko, hindi pa. Hindi pa. And you have to remember, Tonino, uh, yesterday the, or the other day, the president warned his friends. Mm -hmm. Ano sinabi niya? Sabi niya, um, it's a lonely job. I need all the friends I can have. Don't give me a reason to have one less friend. Uh, I think he was referring to a few people in, in particular there. I, I would not speculate who, but um, I have my suspicions. But of course, I cannot. You know so, who the closest friends of the president are there. So um, you feel that there will be more um, cabinet secretaries removed or undersecretaries? I think so. Ma uh, probably, uh, yes, yes. Dahil na, nababalitaan nila na may ginagawang kalukuhan itong mga to. Eventually, you can hide, uh -huh. but you cannot run from it. Eventually, it will reach the president. Alam mo, mahirap situation ng presidente, di ba? May cordon sanitaire. It will, you cannot also just believe everybody who whispers into your ear that may nangyayari. You also have to be fair, but I think sooner or later, he will see the truth. Pag-usapan natin itong ano, China and yung... Uh, our rights over those islands uh, so West Philippine Sea. Mm -hmm. um, before the SONA, there, was, there were several uh, surveys conducted and 9 out of 10 Filipinos feel that the President is not pushing our rights to, to, to over those, those islands. But 9 out of 10 also support him, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so, perhaps that's why he, you can see he listened. He mentioned that we will, in fact, assert our rights over the South China Sea. He, he did specifically mention that in his speech. Yes, I, I read I read. And that, I heard that. again, sa akin, he's keeping his eyes on the prize, which is for him a more comfortable life for all. I'm not going to give up my properties. I'm not going to give up my territory. But in the meantime, that I cannot defend them, uh, that I can go in there and militarily drive the Chinese out, I might as well get the most out of them so that to uplift my people's lives economically well, without he, signing anything or without getting to anything that gives us those rights. And I think what ang gusto din ng China dyan is not territorial. Ang gusto din nila dyan is economic. That's why there's a chance there to find some middle ground there somewhere without giving up territory. And, um, well, he also did mention that because of the, the warming of relationships, our, our fishermen are now able to fish in those waters. But yes, yun ang objective niya palagi. But, uh, of course, if it's our waters, we shouldn't be, you know, bullied into not being able to fish in our waters. We know? should not. Yeah, we but should. But the reality is we don't have the naval ships that they have, right? And by negotiating with them and letting our fishermen in there, we have not in any way given up our rights. What do you think will be the ending to our, to our claims here on those, um, on those islands? Ano ba ang ending dito? What does, the, or what does the president feel the ending will be? I wouldn't know what he feels because he's somebody who has mastered the art of concealing the cards. No? But if you go with his own what is the public statement is made is not going to give up on those rights. The way I see that is that that's the kind of situation, Tonino, where you would just want it, you want the day of reckoning to be postponed and postponed and postponed and postponed. Let's work with where we can work together, which is economic. And who knows, someday we will be strong enough, right, to be even more assertive. And I have feeling that what is ours will stay ours. Because ultimately, I believe that we will triumph. If this is our own, we will triumph. But to confront China now, militarily, that's suicide. 
ba? On the economic front, I have a texter here na hindi daw napaliwanag ng maganda yung bagong batas ng WIS, which is mm. basically yung train 2. Mm. So basically, the president, already we already passed the train 1. Yung unang ano. And then ngayon, uh, the president is urging Congress to pass the second round of reforms sa taxation. And even the future rounds. In the future rounds. Uh, are you aware of what this... Uh, this new law will in, will include? I know and that. how it will help our, our, our people? Well, what I heard mentioned was a lowering of the corporate tax, which is the right. idea of which is you will have more investments and mm -hmm. you'll have more jobs. Uh, there's also the idea I've heard of lowering the estate taxes somewhere along the way. I don't know if it's that on the second or the... Actually, the, the estate tax has already been lowered yes, okay. in train one. Yung yeah. lowering of income tax of the uh, corporate. corporate that's being yes, yes. planned for this one. And then... Kasi ang nangyayari, his critics are saying that the, because of train one, the price of commodities has gone up. Parang ganun and the ganun biggest ganun. driver and actually is rice. And also, ano, inflation has gone up. Yes. So yun ang, yun ang sinasabi ng critics ng Pangulo. Correct. And that is good that we have critics. It's good that we have a democracy because... I would really also urge the economic managers that they have to be very, very sensitive to that issue because it might balance on the Excel sheet. On the Excel sheet, it might show that in the long term, three months or six months, we would already be on a net positive. But in the meantime, you cannot keep somebody hungry for six months waiting for that Excel sheet to balance. So I hope they make the adjustment because I think people have really registered also the fact that they're having a difficult time. They're having a hard time. Okay. Um, we'll, we're getting to the end of the show, but before we end, I'd like to give you these gift certificates for taking the time out. Okay. And then one is for Shobe, actually. So All right. it's Vine Holistic Aesthetic Clinic. Okay. And 2,500 worth of uh, All right. clinic. Wow. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, you know, it's time has come is running out now so I'd like to give this opportunity for you to address the audience and then give us a summary of how you felt the president performed in the sauna and how it will affect the Philippines I think I saw a very very determined president that is really who's really determined to pursue his ultimate vision which is to create a strong middle class and even an upper middle class or in his simple terms he calls it a more comfortable for life for all and to do that, he needs to pursue the war on drugs, the war on criminality, the war on corruption, and he's kind of going to be unwavering of, on that. And that's why the people support him, and I support him. Um, the UNSA Department of Agriculture, the good thing I like about it, Tonino, is every day you're there, you can help people because 70% of our poor are in that sector. Every little thing you can do, it means so much to them. For a, them to even see a government official, go there and see them and see their problems, there where it is and it's already a big relief to them so I'm you know I'm optimistic that the president will pursue that vision and he is going to pursue that shift to federalism but he will do it in a democratic way he will not in, he will not tolerate any cancellation of the elections he will want to have elections he will want the people to approve uh, the changes but he will push for it aggressively. Uh, that's the way he wants to do it. He does not want to, to force it down people's throats. And he's confident enough, and I feel confident enough that the people would support it. Um, yeah, so maybe to end this uh, show, I, I will read the last statement that he mentioned in his sauna, mm -hmm. which is quoted from Abraham Lincoln, yes. uh, one of the American presidents that he admires. Yes. From a time of conflict from in America. From a time of conflict. And he said, and I came across this statement, which has been with me since I was a fiscal in the 70s, Duterte to. And he said, if I were to try to read, much less answer, all the attacks made on me, this shop, the presidency, might as well be closed for any other business. I do the very best I know how, the very best I can, and I mean to keep doing this until the end. If the end brings me out all right, what is, what has been said against me won't amount to anything. 
But if the end brings me out wrong, ten angels of God swearing that I was right would make no difference. That's right. So that's what that's why how he's going to be judged on how we will be in 2022. And the people will be the judge. Everyone, history will be the judge. So yes, but nobody can say that he did not pursue what he believed was the right thing to do. In Abraham Lincoln's case, it was the fight against um, oppression, right? Oppression, slavery. slavery yeah. In his, in his um, fight, it's the fight against drugs, criminality, corruption. Okay, it's been a very uh, entertaining, enlightening uh, one hour, educational one hour with Under Secretary Paul Filavina. I hope you come back to this show. I mean, I know you're busy because yes. of your work, but it's, it's an honor to have you here sharing your insights. Um, and unfortunately, we have to end this show. This is Tonino Abana signing off. Libertas, good evening.